Is your refrigerator cooling perfectly but refusing to trip? Today, I'll show you how I calibrated this unit to shut off automatically at exactly minus 27.5 degrees. We have replaced the compressor in this refrigerator, but we are now encountering the following issue. The temperature has dropped to 2.7 degrees Celsius, which is approaching the freezing point. This is lower than the standard operating temperature we want to see. Furthermore, if we look at the freezer, the temperature has reached minus 34.9 degrees Celsius. This is significantly lower than the standard operating range for a household freezer. Looking inside the refrigerator section, there is a significant amount of ice buildup. This confirms that the unit is overcooling and not cycling off properly. This is the temperature selector knob. It's connected to a thermostat, which is the component responsible for regulating and controlling the internal temperature. There is a clear problem here, so let's look at how to fix it. The unit isn't functioning correctly on its original settings, so we need to troubleshoot the cause. To fix this, we are going to set up a separate controller. This will allow us to manually or automatically regulate the on and off cycles of the compressor. As you can see, this area has already been burnt. I have already repaired the wiring but the thermostat itself is still not functioning. At this point, we'll detach the control knob. Simply pull it straight out toward yourself to release it from the shaft. You can use a proper nut driver for this, but I'm going to use needle nose pliers to loosen and open the nut. The manufacturer has provided this specific hole for the thermostat's capillary tube to pass through. Only about four to five inches of the capillary tube goes into this hole. I have already miked the tube at that specific length to ensure it's inserted correctly. The customer didn't mention any issues with the thermostat, but upon inspection, it's clear that it was actually faulty. I actually gave the customer a call while I was changing the part. I asked them, how come you didn't tell me the thermostat wasn't turning off? I was shocked and deeply troubled by what the customer shared. I just sat there in disbelief wondering how something like this is even possible in the real world. Now listen closely to the customer's response. He told me that he has been using this refrigerator, just like this, for the past 10 years. Believe it or not, they told me that during the very first year, they didn't even realize that a refrigerator is supposed to trip or turn off automatically. He told me that whenever the ice buildup got too thick, he would simply unplug the fridge for a few hours. Once the ice melted away, he would just plug it back in and start the cycle all over again. Over the years, he actually called two or three different technicians. He told all of them the same thing. This fridge is producing way too much ice. He said that when the previous technicians inspected it, they realized the thermostat wasn't cycling automatically. They told him it needed to be replaced and he gave them the go ahead to change it. Believe it or not, they replaced the thermostat three or four different times during that period, but every single one of them failed to fix the problem. The customer told me he absolutely had to keep using the fridge, so he came up with his own solution. Every single night at 11 p.m., he would manually switch it off and then turn it back on between 7 and 8 a.m. the next morning. He's been following this routine for 10 long years. His answer was absolutely shocking to me. I couldn't believe that any user could have the patience to deal with a problem like that for such a long time. I'm just going to straighten the capillary tube now. You have to be gentle here to avoid any kinks or breaks. One of our viewers asked a question on my previous video about where the return wire connects to the thermostat. So let me explain that to you now. This thermostat normally features three connection points. The H terminal is for the main power, and as you can see, we have the orange wire connected here. The L terminal is typically for a heating element, but in this model, it remains empty. Finally, the C terminal is for the return wire, the one our viewer asked about. This is the wire that switches the unit on and off, and in this case, it's the red or pinkish wire. This is the location of the evaporator inside the fridge. If you look closely from this point to this point and all the way over to this point, 
the evaporator is actually embedded inside the body of the refrigerator. So here is how the process works. The cooling first enters the system right here at this start point. From there, the refrigerant begins to move across the evaporator, circulating from left to right to spread the cold evenly. As it travels through the internal pipes, it completes its path. The cooling pipes then lead back down through the body and return straight to the compressor. Now we need to remove the thermostat capillary from its housing. To do this safely, we first have to carefully examine the area to figure out the best way to slide it out. We need to check for any hidden screws, clips, or specific angles that will allow the unit to come forward easily. It's important to find the right path for the thermostat to come out so we don't put any unnecessary pressure on the wires or the capillary tube. In my opinion, this specific spot is the best path to route the capillary tube through. To make this work, I'm going to carefully cut the plastic right here at this point. I'll also trim this other section over here. By making these small modifications, it will create a clear channel, allowing the capillary tube to pass through very easily, without being pinched or bent. Now we need to arrange and fit the thermostat into this space. As you can see, this particular thermostat was slightly too long. To fix this and ensure a perfect fit, I have carefully bent it down to adjust the length. This looks like the perfect spot. Let's get this installed right here. All right, we've now connected the refrigerator to the power supply. The refrigerator has been running for about an hour and a half now. If we check the freezer temperature, it's currently sitting at a solid minus 25.2 degrees Celsius. Looking at the refrigerator compartment, there's plenty of ice buildup, which means the cooling is excellent. However, despite these low temperatures, the thermostat still hasn't tripped automatically. 10 minutes have passed and the freezer temperature has now reached minus 27.5 degrees Celsius. This confirms that the cooling system is performing at its peak capacity. And there we have it. The refrigerator has just tripped automatically. If we check the electric meter, it shows that the unit is no longer drawing any power. The compressor has shut down exactly on cue, proving our thermostat is perfectly calibrated. This means our repair is a success. We now have full control over the refrigerator's temperature via the thermostat dial. This will not only keep the food fresh, but also ensure the fridge runs efficiently to save on electricity bills. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos and subscribe. Thank you.